What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I'm gonna break down what's going on with Tesla, Spy, and Video, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. I'm gonna break down what's happening to the market thus far, which you should be watching for going into tomorrow, because tomorrow is going to be another important day as we have Jerome Powell giving a speech. But before I break anything down, all this information, before I talk about what's going on with the markets and what the charts are suggesting, let me just mention a couple of things. I am personally not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. So anyways, let's talk about the market. Let's talk about how things are looking thus far. SPY is currently just a little bit down in the after hours, but we got a little pump at the very end of the day. And this was because of manipulation, not to mention repositioning that sometimes happens at the end of the month. So what ended up happening was... The market was selling off today, selling off, selling off, trying to turn people bearish and just continue to remain very weak, very low for almost the entire day. And then at the very last 10 to 15 minutes, we saw this thing just start pumping very, very hard. And we saw a very, very big buy order because of these imbalances. So with the buy uh, imbalance that just like ended up coming, uh, these institutions were trying to rebalance their uh, positions. We ended up seeing them uh, buy into the market and try to get us like a better close for the end of the month. But that doesn't necessarily guarantee it's going to continue like this for long because I still believe there's going to be some downside coming. However, whether or not we get an immediate downpour for the market that kind of holds up for some time before we start selling off could depend on what Jerome Powell says now the market interprets that, not to mention the ISM manufacturing data. So you just want to be very careful approaching these big events. But from a technical standpoint, I don't think that SPY is actually very strong. You can see it's kind of turning slowly. It's on a slight downtrend right now in the MACD. We have this quadruple bearish divergence that started to play out. And I think that this thing is uh, starting to show signs of a shift in this market structure. Now, we haven't broken this high right over here, this low down here yet. We're kind of stuck between this range. But there is a risk of some downside. I still think that's on the table. I think it's most likely going to be coming. So what's going to happen tomorrow? What's happening to the market so far? I want to go over this real quick before I break down more details about the charts. For today, okay, we had the PCE data aligning with expectations. Same thing with the initial jobless claims. And all the data was quite decent. Same thing with the four-week and six-week bill auctions. But then for tomorrow, we have the... Uh, S&P Global Manufacturing PMI data coming out, the ISM manufacturing numbers are all going to be coming out, which could cause some volatility. Then after this, uh, it's all coming out once again at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then after that, at 11 o'clock a.m., we have Jerome Powell giving his speech. This could move the whole market. When he speaks, there's no telling what could happen. So be very careful. We'll see what Powell ends up saying. On top of all of this, I just want to mention that when it comes to the way earnings are looking, we have Dell about to announce its earnings very soon, not to mention just a couple of others for tomorrow, but most of the earnings are done and nothing has been too bad thus far. The market is still quite greedy. Many indicators are still on extreme greed, and we're still seeing the puts and call positioning still on extreme greed, which tends to tell us that the market's in a topping process. Now, does that mean the market has to sink immediately? Not necessarily, but I still think that uh, it's on the table and it's going to be happening very soon. We just have to wait and see what Jerome Powell says to see how that affects us. And I still think there's downside that's imminent and still on the table. When it comes to Tesla, I just wanted to mention that with the Cybertruck events, you know, it was very, very eventful, very fun uh, to look at the specs and the presentation that Elon Musk gave about the Cybertruck. They have different variants of the truck and it's very powerful, has a lot of uh, strong towing capacities. It was also compared to other vehicles out there. Strong acceleration for the Cyber Beast uh, variant, which I think is just super, super awesome. But one of the things I warned you guys about when it comes to events like this was the saying, buy the rumors, sell the news. So after the event ended, I was warning you that we might see a sell off in Tesla. And if you look at Tesla right now, in the after hours, it's down another four points, down another 2%. Tesla's down quite a bit. And this could have an effect on the, on the market going into tomorrow. We can see SPY started dropping too in the after hours. It's actually just barely, it's, it's approaching the 455 area. And we're seeing a lot of stocks still kind of down. Even the QQQ is down quite a bit in the after hours. So we'll be watching to see how this ends up affecting the markets moving forward. But I just want to go over some very important things first. So when it comes to SPY, one could argue we have like a head and shoulders like pattern. Uh, if we end up sinking right here, you could even interpret this as like an inverse head and shoulders depending on your interpretation. Uh, in my opinion, we're going to have to watch and see what the manufacturing numbers cause for the first 15 and 30 minutes after tomorrow's open. And then we'll see what Jerome Powell's speech causes as well. But I still believe if this thing gets another pump like this, 
we're going to see some tight liquidity right over here that's going to be grabbed. And I don't think the move is going to last. I think we're going we're to get another sell off as well. I don't think the market's going to hold uh, that level for long. And on top of that, we could even just sell off as soon as we open tomorrow and just start tanking depending on the data. So I still favor that there might be some downside coming very soon. Part of why I'm saying that is because many indicators are at, at extremes. And then we also have this bearish divergence developing on SPY. We have uh, you know, the chart just continuing to maintain this position. And we're going to be watching to see if the market gets some kind of bounce or not. But there is a risk of some downside to turn really bearish. We want to see SPY basically lose 453. If we lose that, I think it's going to be making a new low and it's going to start sinking back down towards this imbalance towards 450. That's like the most simple move to the downside that's going to come. And there could be even more downside after that. But as of right now, we're not officially ready to start selling off very hard unless we start breaking supports. We came close today and the bears are starting to gain some more edge over this market, but we're not entirely ready yet. So we'll just have to wait and see what Jerome Powell says just to see how this affects SPY. We're currently around the 455s. Much 455 is support at this imbalance. I think we're going to test that tomorrow. If we lose this, watch this uh, previous uh, uh, channel right over here, which is where we saw SPY as. This is going to be our next support at 453.5. If we lose this, anticipate some downside. I think that the odds still greatly favor that. Now, if you look at the daily on SPY, uh, the daily candlestick technically could be a, a little bit bullish. You could argue that we might push a little bit higher and then start selling off later. But the MACD is losing lots of bullish momentum. And we also have a not only a single, but more like a double bearish divergence right over here on the RSI. So with that developing, there's a good chance that this thing is either going to pop a little bit more and then drop or just start dropping from here. And I still think that 447 is going to be tested within the next couple of weeks. And I still see some downside coming as time goes on. SPY is also dropping quite a bit in the after hours right now. So this could just be a trap and it could just start selling off as soon as tomorrow, depending on the numbers. So I anticipate some downside. I think that we're going to see uh, an attempt to fill this gap. And I think that it still is on the table. So I'm not really changing my view. I just want to warn you all to just wait for what the data suggests and also what Jerome Powell says. But I still anticipate some downside is on the table. As far as Tesla goes, this thing is looking a little bit weaker. But don't forget, we have the daily 200 EMA at 230 and then 233 being the 20 EMA on the daily. The four hour time frame also shows 233 being our support. And that's going to be at the 200 EMA. So 233, 232, like that range, not to mention 230 are some supports on Tesla. If we break 230, we're going to turn more bearish. Otherwise, we're just going to kind of chop from here. But the overall trend has been bearish. You can see Tesla has been breaking down. And if you look at the chart, Tesla is still looking pretty weak. Let me just pull up Tesla. Tesla's looking kind of weak because after the Cybertruck event ended, this thing just continued to tank. And this thing is currently around 235 a share. We're going to be watching 233. It could back test this. It might rebound in the morning, try to make its way back up to 238, maybe a little higher, but then it's going to eventually break back down. And I think that depending on what Jerome Powell says, depending on all the data, this thing could just continue to sink. If we lose 232, I'm going to turn more bearish. I think 230 is coming, then 227. I think that if we end up closing below 230, that's going to be a very bearish signal because when you look at the daily on Tesla, you will notice that. The daily shows this uh, unfilled gap down here. We have this unfilled gap at 223. If we end up hitting this gap, and we, uh, I'm sorry, if we, if we lose 230, we could come down to fill that gap. So watch for that gap fill as well. So that, that's another thing that's worth noting. Tesla still looks weak in my opinion, so be very careful with it. For just a couple more tickers on Apple, Apple made an attempt to fall. It actually got bought right back up. It's still kind of flat at 190, but notice how it's not really breaking out, right? We've been stuck between 193 and 189 for how many weeks now? It's been weeks. We've been stuck up here forming a head and shoulders. I don't think Apple is going to continue to break out. I think that this thing is due for some selling. I think that that's going to be on the table very, very soon. Look at Apple, right? If we take a look at this, we had this left shoulder here. We had this head that formed in the right shoulder that formed, and this thing ended up breaking down. We get, we're trying to push up back to get this like back to and we could just continue selling off. So it's curling. I think that it's making lower highs and lower lows. So this is like a lower high here, lower low here, lower high, lower low. 
This is technically still a lower high. So we could still see Apple continue to downtrend. I don't think that Apple is just going to turn bullish. If they try to push it up a little bit higher, they could just be grabbing more liquidity up here towards like 191. It could push a little bit and then come back down. And I still anticipate it's going to see more downside. I think it's going to back test 188 flat and eventually make its way down to 186. So I still anticipate some downside on Apple, just like uh, for Tesla and Spy. On the QQQ, we're going to be watching very important support. So this had a red day today. It actually did not get much of a bounce or like compared to that of SPY, it wasn't that strong. And it's still red. It's also sinking in the after hours. It's sinking kind of hard in the after hours. So we're going to be watching 387. If we lose this, it's going to start sinking even lower. And you want to be looking to uh, or towards the daily time frame. The daily is also looking kind of bearish in terms of technicals. So I could see this thing rebound a bit. If, if, if it back tests like 390, that's fine. It could still excuse me, sorry guys, it could still sell off and make its way back down towards support right over here around this 383 area. If we lose 383, I anticipate more downside. So I think 386, 383 are, are some supports. Then we have this next support down here around 377. I think the QQQ is going to test those and we're eventually going to see a sell off. So I still anticipate some downside as time goes on. So could this thing bounce towards this imbalance? I could see it try to get back up to 390 with the Powell speech tomorrow, but I think eventually it's going to sell off, and I think that it has a gap to fill, and this is looking weaker than SPY in my opinion. Last but not least, the last one I'm going to go over on trading view is going to be NVIDIA. NVIDIA is looking weak, right? This thing is at 466. It's testing the 200 EMA on the four-hour time frame. It could push back up and back test 474 to the breakout area. I think it might try to bounce just a bit and then eventually make its way back down lower. But the chart looks bearish. It's going to eventually make its way down lower towards like 459. I anticipate more downside for NVIDIA as time goes on. So on NVIDIA, watch this thing back test 474 to 470, reject and make its way down to 459. And if that fails us, you know, we have like 455 coming. Not to mention 450 is another level. It looks weak on the daily. And I think that there's still more potential for downside. All right, guys, those are the main five I went over. I just want to go over a couple of others. So if I got this rejection as we were predicting, it could, you know, form a double top, try to push up again and eventually sell off. The IW managed to close kind of green, but I want to be careful because the daily candlestick is not looking the strongest. There's still a risk of it coming back down to 178. Something else worth noting is Microsoft. Microsoft just barely closed green. It was selling off for almost the entire day before this happened to this last minute push because of the fact that it's the end of the month. And we're still forming what appears to be like a head and shoulders like pattern up here. We might see this pop again towards 380, uh, 381 or so, then reject and come back down towards 375 or even below that. So I still anticipate some downside. I still think it's on the table. On AMD, this is also looking kind of bearish. Uh, if you look at AMD like this, we have a bearish divergence that formed. It could back to 122, then reject and come back down to 116. I still anticipate the downside. For the VIX, although this thing is coming down a bit, we have to see if this thing could break 13.37. Looking kind of weak on the four-hour time frame. But on the daily time frame, this is a different story. It looks like it's getting very close to a bullish crossover. So it could drop a little bit and then try to break out. We need to see the VIX try to push up a bit higher. I still think there's potential for it. So we're just waiting to see if we could get that break. The dollar has been holding up decently. Even today, it held up. It looks bullish. So this is a bearish signal for the stock market. Same thing with the SQQQ trying to break out. This could be bearish for the market as well. Coinbase is kind of flat. It came down initially and came back up. Watch for it to try to back test this resistance right here at 126.5 and eventually make its way down to 122. If that fails us, watch 118 to 117. That's going to be our key support. If we lose that, it's going to come down towards 112. On Google, Google's looking kind of bearish. We have a very bearish looking structure right here on the MACD. Could back test 134 to 135, reject and make its way back down towards 131. If that fills us, watch this gap down here at 127. I could see Google filling that gap over the next couple of weeks. So there's downside potential. For Amazon, we had a red day. We have a head and shoulders like pattern on the daily time frame. If I pull up the four hour time frame, we're going to notice the same thing. Basically, we basically have this potential head and shoulders. I think that Amazon is going to be due for some downside. Look for a back test of one. 46 and a rejection. I want to see this thing come down to 144. If that fails us, I anticipate more downside. As far as meta goes, this thing was down about $5 for today. Look for a little push for about 330 than a rejection. Watch for 321. If that fails us, we're going to be sinking even lower towards like 315. Uh, so I could see meta kind of push back up towards this resistance 
a little push could come towards like 330 and a rejection. I think it's going to make its way down to 321 then 316. I think that there's more downside coming. I think the market is not as strong as some people may think it is. I think that uh, whether or not we get an immediate sell-off or if it's delayed a bit is going to depend on the data for tomorrow. So we'll be watching for all of this. This may cause some crazy volatility. Watch the manufacturing numbers. Watch Jerome Powell's speech, guys. And just know the market is showing some weakness. With that said, have a great day. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Take care, rest well, and I'll see you guys very soon. Thank you, the market to the moon, because the long term is still very, very priced despite these short term fluctuations. And peace out.